Hello and welcome to another episode of For the Love of Sports. My name is Michael Raziel. This is a show where we get to talk about sports, we get to talk about business, and we get to talk about everything in between. Wherever you're listening, however you're listening, you know what to do. Five-star review on Spotify, five-star review and say something nice on Apple, and make sure to like and subscribe, like and subscribe on YouTube. More importantly, today I have David Fales. He's a former NFL quarterback with the Jets, Dolphins, Ravens, and Bears. He is now an account executive over at Zoom. David, how you doing today, man? Doing well, Michael. I appreciate you having me. Glad to be here. Pleasure's all mine. Excited to hear your story. Not too often do I get to have NFL quarterbacks on the show, so any any chance I get, I'm going to take advantage of it. So thank you so much to Charlie Ruiz for putting us in contact. What a great guy. He had an awesome story. He had an awesome episode. So, David, you got high watermarks to hit. But before we get into any of that, the first question I have for everybody on the For the Love of Sports podcast is, why do you love sports so much? I mean, up until two years ago, it was really my entire life. Like, I'd been in it forever. And um, I think I, I it's taught me so much. I've met so many people. And then, like, and that's just me reflecting post-football. But I, I think when you're in it, that's, that's all I've ever done. And, um, yeah, I think that, that was how I got into it. I, I got it started in seventh grade or either or even earlier than that. And then um, – once you're, you kind of get good at it and you start seeing that success and um, that feedback, it's like you just hooked. And um, fortunately, I had a lot of good coaches along the way, too. That taught me some things. Coaching, talent, uh, you had to put in a little bit of effort. Let's be honest. You don't just wake up and, uh, you know, go to the NFL, especially as we know. Um, so I think that part's pretty important. So appreciate you being humble. But come on, man. We're here to have a good time. Let's be honest. Yeah. So, yeah, just talking a little bit about my story, I – I was fortunate enough to, to get like a mentor. He's my mentor now, but it, he was my quarterback coach at that time. Um, retired like in his 20s and just loved football. Ended up coming to my area and coaching at my high school um, in my freshman year and literally spent like two hours a day, five days a week with me. I had no idea what this guy was sacrificing. I was just like, this guy's here every day. He, he seems to know a lot about playing quarterback. I'm going to keep showing up. And and he he had talked to my mom uh, my freshman year, too, One after one of our throwing sessions. He's like, hey, make sure he keeps coming. This guy's going to be good. And I'm like, what is this guy talking about? Like, I handed the ball off like 20 times last game. We're not, we're not, we don't throw the ball here. Um, but he he basically, like, built the foundation for my skill and, like, really – the discipline how to build a skill at anything like just showing up and doing the same repetitive thing every day it's like we were we would do the same thing every week for like four years straight and then um ended up getting an offer my junior year to nevada reno and so in, committed there um that was my only offer but i committed and like just stopped exploring there were so many kids in that class too that was like Derek carr uh matt barkley there's tate forcier if you remember that guy, his name he was in michigan um richard bruja uh so many guys that had already kind of taken up all the big schools so um i wasn't going to wait around and, and try to go in with, with one of those guys but shouldn't have been there that was kaepernick's junior year and they were still running that offense so I, as soon as I got there, I'm like, this is not it. Um, uh, I left after one fall, bounced back to a JC um, for two years, and then got San Jose. And they were really my only offer, too. I had Indiana State, and they were in a coaching change, and they were bringing in, like, four different um, quarterbacks as well. They, were, they just needed somebody to come in right now, and they weren't really sure who they wanted. But that was my only offer. And then San Jose State came in last minute, and that was really – like the perfect timing perfect place it's an hour away from me um and they they just needed a guy to get the ball they had kind of been building the foundation for the team the last three years just getting beat up playing all these big schools and, and just building that culture and then the year i came in they were all juniors seniors for the most part and they just really they needed a quarterback the guy had just graduated and i was like the perfect situation for me to go into and we had one of the best years ever at San Jose State. We finished 21 in the nation, won the bowl game. Um, and then that, that whole staff ended up leaving. Uh, McIntyre went to Colorado. He's at a FIU now. We just had our 10-year anniversary, which was really cool. He came back to the school after our Friday night game. Flew to, in the middle of the season, flew to San Jose to be around the guys, which was, which was cool. Um, 
And then um, that next year, Ron Carrier came in and we were good, but when you get that coaching change, they were trying to, they switched up the defense. Um, it was just a tough transition year for us, but we could have been a lot better than we were. We were six and six. And then I ended up getting, getting drafted that year to the bears for in the sixth round, which was, which was an awesome experience. Like, it's like, it's your dream to, to get drafted. And I was so like naive, not really sure what to expect. My agent, I remember it was it was an awesome day, but also a very stressful day. My agent was telling me like, "Hey, probably second, third round." So that first that that second day, I'm like, "All right." There was a few teams I'd met with, worked out with. I was like, "It might, it might, it might be one of them." That day passes. Now you're on the third day, and it's like, "Oh, for sure, fourth, fifth, that, those rounds go." Now it's like, "Oh my gosh!" So you're sitting there for two days because it starts Thursday night that first round. So you're kind of mm-hmm. seeing which how many quarterbacks get taken off in that first day, and then. Um, but Chicago was such a cool place to be, um, but also like a, a lot of learning. But yeah, I've been I've been rambling here. So I then went to Chicago, Dolphins, Jets, um, and really followed Adam Gase around from once he connect, I hooked up with him my second year in Chicago. Then he ended up after his one year there went to the Dolphins for three years. I, I followed him after my year my third year in Chicago, and then followed him to the Jets too. I love it. So, that was a nice little crash course there. I appreciate it. Uh, so now, now I can yeah. go back. I can ask some questions because I think, again, your story, well, we just kind of went over in about four minutes. Obviously, there's a lot of shit in there. There's a lot of stuff no, going on. No, there's a lot. I mean, you, yeah. there's, there's so much in there, man. So I I, I, we, I don't want to spend the whole time on you know your career. It was incredible. I mean, you made it. You were in the NFL for seven years. Like That is nothing to shy at. That is amazing. You got drafted to the NFL. Like That's absolutely ridiculous, right? You know, one of 250-ish, you know, 252, if I'm not mistaken, every year. I mean, that's amazing. Um, but I do want to go back. I want to go back to this, that one of the first things you talk about, uh, your mentor, the gentleman that you worked with then, you're still working with now. I mean, that those types of relationships don't come around a lot for just really people in general, right? Like that's something where very rarely do you meet someone a little bit older that can help you in a significant role in any way, shape, or form in high school that you're now talking to in your mid-30s, if I may. Like, what, like talk to me a little bit more about that relationship and how – you have grown, he has grown, you've been able to grow together, and he's been able to help you in multiple different facets. And, you know, please share his name if you feel comfortable doing it. Yeah, yeah, his, his name His name is Peter Goodson. And there isn't, I don't think there's anybody like him I, that I have met, really. Like, the amount of time that he has spent with me, it's, I can never repay him. And I had no idea, like, the investment he was putting in me and a lot of other guys that he worked with around here. But I, I definitely just kept showing up. Um, he, he had had a lot of success. He lived on wall in New York and had success in wall street investment banking did really well and retired. So he had a lot of time on his hands and loved football. Um, had gone around, was around Bill Walsh, Terry Shea. Um, so like my freshman year, he's bringing in clips of Joe Montana, Bill Walsh. I'm, I'm learning how to, uh, how to do a seven step drop my freshman year, a five step drop, all those rhythm drops, which you don't really get taught anymore. And even not a whole lot, I think then as much either to the way I was being taught like that old West coast. Um, But it built the foundation for everything else I learned moving forward. And I didn't even, I had no idea. Um, Yeah. He, uh, and I, I just always kept coming back to him. And even now, now the questions are different. They're not about football. It's like life. Like, hey, how did you handle your transition from like working, doing really well? And now what are you going to do with the rest of your life? Like money's not a thing for you. You got, you have family, kids. Like how are, he just, the guy never has a bad day. He shows up and is so consistent, um, never emotional. Um, so I'm always just picking his brain. Like, how are you the same way the, the entire, like 16 years I've known you. He's, he just turned 80 and doesn't look like he's aged one bit. Good for him. Consistency, yeah. man. It's all about consistency. Shout out. Uh, shout out to that gentleman. It sounds like he's doing something right. That's awesome. Yeah. He just likes football. So he just kind of came by and taught us some stuff. And that, that is just, that's an awesome relationship to have. And as you said, you've been able to ask him more and more questions as life goes on just about life rather than specifically about football, because clearly this guy knows what he's doing. And I'm sure, you know, going, you know, now now I'm kind of curious, right? You had someone like this, you had, you know, your friends, your family, you then commit to a school that, you know, from the, you know, brief moment that you spoke about it with, you know, Nevada, 
Yeah, I remember that Kaepernick team. He was incredible. Like they were amazing. Yeah. But as you said, like that's not an offense you're 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 trying to get into. So what are what are those conversations like? Is are are they selling you a bill of goods? It's like, oh, when when he's gone, we're changing the offense. Or were you just so uh, headstrong or confident that it's like, no, I can learn anything? Like, why why pick a school that kind of not set you back at the time, but definitely send you on like a weird kind of course after that? Yeah. So like we had. My junior year I played, we put together, you didn't have huddle or any of those things where you could just send it out via email or whatever app kids are using to get recruited. We had to put together like a DVD, a cover letter, yep. everything, all my stats and like send it out. So we had narrowed it down to like six or seven schools that we were going to go pay for to go to their camps and just and throw with them, whether they were having a quarterback camp or like a team camp. I think teams still always have that. But I, I was just, I, was, I had connected with somebody with there and we're like, hey, we're going to come in this day. We just want to work out for you guys. Um, and they were interested, obviously. And Nevada was one of those teams, and and I had done really well. And they they just throwing wise. And I remember talking to Coach Olt, who had been there for a while, had a lot of success. He was like, "Hey, before Kaepernick, it was uh, Jeff Rowe was his name, and he's he was a passing quarterback before Kaepernick. And he's like, that's that's what the pistol offense was meant to be. And I'm like, okay, that's that sounds good. Let's do that. And then I got there and. Um, and also why I committed, it was my first offer. We, mm-hmm. Me and my mom were super excited. We're like, what? We got one? Like, let's Going commit. Going to college, mom, and, for free. Yeah. And and, and my mentor, good Peter, uh, he, he was like, do not go there. He's telling me like, no. And and uh, just because he was thinking, he was telling my mom, I remember when we were trying to figure out which school to go to. Like, you need to figure out what schools have the most quarterbacks going to the NFL. When I was in high school still, he was saying that. And I'm like, what is this guy saying? He's crazy. And so, like, I don't know how many Nevada had, and I didn't care, but it was our first offer, and we were excited, and we ended up committing. And then I got there, I'm like, should not be here. So, and, and he was, like, the first guy I'm calling in all these decisions. So I made a decision to leave a Division One school. In between my two years at Nevada or MPC, when I went back to a junior college, I had an offer for, to Wyoming as well. And I was there for a month. And I remember talking to Goodson again. I'm like, I'm not going to play here. Like, and so I just like trusting my gut and my intuition, left another Division One scholarship on the table, went back to MPC for one more year, and then ended up getting Indiana State and San Jose. But yeah, Goodson, he was my guy in all the decisions. And there was a lot more other things that came up in the I'm NFL. Sure. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah, that's that is pretty interesting. I mean, I'm sure he's you know, it's in, it's it's good to know that he said not to go there like that's that I think that solidifies right like the the impact he's had on your life because he was right like it's always like, you know how you just don't want to do what your parents tell you just because they told you kind of thing, especially when you're a teenager. Yeah. I'm not going to quite go that far, but it's nice to know that, you know, he was on the right side of history, I guess, in some way, shape, or form. And that's only solidified probably your confidence in asking him more questions moving forward because you're like, oh, shit, I guess he was right. Maybe I should ask him some more stuff. Because um, I think that's clearly yeah. uh, that's pretty important. He was, uh, he's 100%. I, I used to tell everybody, I'm like, who, who other quarterbacks that have uh, had him as a mentor, I was like, he's a, uh, every time I haven't listened to him, I was wrong. Damn. So, like, even if uh, now, now my gut – like even even when I was asking him, I kind of already knew what I wanted to do, but he was he was definitely there, um, just making me feel mm-hmm. comfortable with my decision. Because there was another time in the NFL where I they potentially wanted to make me a coach, and he was like, "You're not going to be a coach. Like, why are you? Why you don't want to be a coach? Like, keep trying to ride this out and play." Um, and and like long story short, they were going to cut me, pay me like a week's pay in the NFL then make me a coach for the rest of the year and I wouldn't be able to play again. I'd basically be, be retiring. I'd be, yeah. I'd be done. And he's, he's like, what are you doing? I end up making, I end up staying on the 53 the rest of the year, playing that year and get like three more years out of it. And make a more. lot more yeah. money than you know, like, a, like a, another, yeah, like a million and a half dollars after that. I'm like, gosh, I would have, it would have been 40 K done playing football or like 1.5 and kept going. Thanks Pete. Appreciate you. Yeah, listen to the Wall Street guy when it comes to dollars. I'm sure he knows exactly what he's doing there. And I think you know it's it's just it's just awesome to hear that you have someone like that in your life that that is capable of doing that. And I think it's just a testament to find people who are where you want to be. Right? Find someone who's done maybe not exactly right. Like he wasn't a quarterback, but he was a guy who was successful. Right? And he's a guy who knew and understood just life and awareness and adaptability. And that's something that you were able to attach to at a young age and now you're able to consistently continue to ask him questions 
we are learning more and more. And I think that's just very important for really anybody out there listening. It's like find someone who's done what you want to do or isn't currently doing what you want to do and just asking questions because they know much more than you do or someone that hasn't done it. Right. So I think that part's pretty important. Um, I want to go to your time at, at San Jose, obviously, as you said, you know, 21, 21 in the nation. Uh, you know, you're, oh, I also actually time out. I want to go back. So you're flip flopping in between these schools. Anyone listening, yeah. remember, you used to have to like sit out. You could not just transfer immediately. Like you used to have to yeah. sit out for a specific period of time. And that's why you're going back to JUCOs and not just transferring to Division One schools. So I think that's an important part of the story as well. Now everything's completely different where you just kind of oh raise your hands. Like, I'm just going to Alabama. And everyone's like, all right, cool. See you later. Um, it goes yeah. a little different now with the transfer portal. Yeah, it is. It's it's way different. Like there would have been, it would have been interesting between my junior and senior year to see how many guys would have followed our coach to Colorado. Um, something yeah. interesting too is like I, I which I, a conversation when I was back in San Jose the other day is like how many guys enter the portal and don't get picked up. Mm-hmm. You know because they think it's they are. It's like, you don't even hear. Yeah, you don't even hear about that. But like guys in in their college career leave a Division One scholarship and they don't get picked up. Like what's I mean, they probably have to go to junior college, and I don't know what that, that process is like for them now, but I'm sure it's easier to bounce back. But there's so many guys that think they can yeah. go get to Alabama and, and probably don't. It's uh, it, I, I heard a number, and it was like an astronomical amount. I don't want to quote something, but it, you know, it's in the multiple yeah. percents, right? Like you're, you're talking like double-digit percentages, which is a lot when you consider how many people are entering the portal and how many more will continue to do it, right? You have 18, 19 year old kids. They're told they're the hottest shit on planet Earth. You go somewhere you don't play. You get yeah. pissed off. F this, I'm leaving. And it's like, well, actually, you weren't playing for a reason. Sorry, guy. We already filled your spot, you know, three times over. So, um, it's interesting. It's the Wild West in college sports now, especially with NIL. But um, I'd rather the college kids get paid for their name, image, and likeness uh, than not. Yeah. So I think that part's pretty important. Um, but your, your time at San Jose, uh, San Jose State, like, I'm, what is that like showing up somewhere and just having that kind of hand in glove? fit and like what what like considering the the trials and tribulations you had up to that point again going to multiple places and playing juco probably i'm assuming somewhere along the way you were like damn this sucks do i really even want to do this anymore and then getting somewhere and seeing immediate success like how much is that like weight off your back this is incredible i love football i'll never you know i'll never think of a bad word about it again yeah i um I think I was lucky because the junior college I was at, I had Mike Rasmussen who who had a similar coaching style to just a division one coach, a, a good division one coach. Like he, I, I had been at Nevada and I'd seen like the routine schedule and how practice was built out. And then I got to coach Rasmussen at the junior college I was, and he had spent time at Cal Fresno. Uh, he, he, he had a, a, been coaching for a while. So he was super strict, super on top of it, trying to build a culture in a short amount of time with junior college. So, I had, and I had been playing for two years too, whereas like maybe I would have went to San Jose right out and sat for two years, not played, but I had been getting better for those two years. And then I showed up um, at San Jose and I was just grateful to be back in Division One. I. I was like, man, I'm so glad to be back here. Like life's good. I don't like, if I don't play, it doesn't matter because I'm staying here. Like I don't have any more eligibility to leave. So like I had that mindset, like I'm, this is it, I'm doing it. Uh, and the guys were awesome. Coach Mack had already built the culture and these guys were bought in. Like the guys that were a little bit older, just from, I didn't experience it, but just from hearing the, from my other the teammates, were the, like they weren't bought in yet. Um, those guys were all gone. So the, the team was, was all in. Um, and it was like a team, a uh, player led team. So I didn't, uh, I just went in and kept doing the same thing I'd always been. I didn't get named the starter until the week of Stanford. It was like Monday, Monday or Sunday. We played Friday or Saturday and I didn't, I had no idea. I wasn't even asking. Like they pulled me in we had a team meeting, like getting ready for Stanford. And then that's when they brought us in individually and said, Hey, you're going to start. I'm like, all right, cool. But like the week before I was rotating with the threes. Um, yeah. So it was, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't like a camp of getting ready. You get like an extra week ready for Stanford. Like we, we were, but I wasn't getting reps with the guy, like the ones the whole time. So and I had no idea. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, you lead them to, as you said, bowl victory, top 25 in the nation. I mean, that means a lot. I know everyone's all about the college football playoff, but like 
I there's four. It's a, it's an invitational. Let's be honest. If you make it to a bowl game, you win it. A bowl, you win a bowl game. That's so yeah. that's so awesome. You get all the gifts, right? We always love you know seeing the swag bags that the PlayStation Bowl gives you. All that shit. So that's always fun too. And I guess like, yeah. with with the expectation, once when you start winning in college, did you before going to San Jose State, did you expect to? get drafted to the NFL? Did you expect to make it to that next level? I mean, you were kind of saying, like, if I don't play, at least I'm here, and this is awesome. Like, before yeah. winning and seeing success, what what were your expectations before and after? Like, before, I was I was just excited to be back. Because, like, yeah, I, during junior college, I'm like, did I mess up? Like, am I not going back to college? I'm not going to be able to pay for this. Like, my, mom, yep. my mom's not paying for this. Um, so... I, and, and then I didn't have a bunch of offers. Um, it was Indiana State, and then San Jose came in last minute. So um, I wasn't thinking about, like, the NFL or anything. But, like, mid m- midway through the season, there was – so, like, Instagram wasn't big then. I don't know if Twitter was, but I wasn't really on it. So I wasn't getting told how good I was. And, like, you'd have to, like, search and see these, like, forums to kind of see where you were statistically. So I, I would do that sometimes. And I, I remember I ended up – I, I think that year led in completion percentage. Um, it was like me, Teddy Bridgewater was two, and then I forgot who who was behind there, but Teddy was up there. Um, and I still didn't even think that I was gonna get, I was gonna be asked to leave early, but after the season, after we won the bowl game, um, I remember I wasn't thinking about leaving, but somebody came up and like, hey, are you gonna make a decision? Yeah, that, that time's coming. I'm like, what are you talking about? Uh, are you going to leave? And I'm like, no, like we're going to be so good next year. Like, what are you talking about? Um, so I, yeah, I didn't even think about it. I was, I was staying, but then, then I realized all the agents start reaching out to you that next year. Um, I had to get insurance just in case like I got injured or something and my draft stock fell, which it did, but not because I got injured. Like, cause you, in order to get insurance, you had to be projecting the first three rounds. Mm-hmm. Um, and that ended up not happening. So, but yeah, I didn't, I don't, I don't think I really thought about it until, going into my senior year mm-hmm. and yeah by that but time, then kinda... keep going yeah and then i and then i wasn't even thinking about it so peter goodson stepped in again and, and he took all the the agent calls i just i had like a text message i copied and pasted and just sent it to everybody and he filtered through all the people hitting me up because you are you are getting hit up oh, uh, imagine. by everyone if you're like if you're one of the top guys which at that time it was it, i was like in the top 10 for sure um and so yeah, all these all these agents are hitting you up, and, and I just he took all those calls, and flew to them, and met with them, and narrowed it down to two, and then we sat down with them, and uh, I just trusted him. So. Yeah, that's incredible! Wow, <laughs> what a what a guy! Again, just a old retired guy that just likes football. Uh, I guess took a liking to you, David. I think that's pretty. That is pretty incredible. Uh, again, you know, be very grateful yeah. for that type of relationship. Not everyone has something like that. So that is, I'm sure you're very grateful for it, but that is just yeah, so man. cool that someone goes out of their way to do that for you. And it sounds like you did this for free or for fun, or maybe you paid it for a couple dinners. Never. Like <laughs> that's, that's really you all I got to do at that point. It, it's crazy. Never charged me. Like I, like not even for working out, never. Like, and I'm telling you, it was like five to six days a week, two hours a day. We'd be out there and, he, and he's teaching a class in Cal, like has two kids. Um, it would take two hours a day from like four to five thirty, four to six, depending on the day. And like, it's crazy. That's awesome, man. That is incredible. Shout yeah. out Pete. Uh, that is fantastic. And so you eventually do get drafted. As you said, you kind of expect the second day, you know, second, third round, potentially you get to the sixth. quarterback's a weird position, right? Because there's only so many of you. There's only so many of you being, being uh, you know, worth being drafted. And once you see a couple teams that you know needed a quarterback or are interested in one, you know, you start to see people fall. I mean, look at Dak Prescott fell all the way to the fourth round. You know, there was a couple guys that year that, you know, just continuously just, you know, okay, we'll just wait because it, at that point, you know, they don't see the value in it. So getting drafted in the sixth round, I mean, as you said, it was incredible. It was amazing. You had you got drafted to the NFL, but it was significantly after the fact and, you know, significantly less zeros probably on those couple of yeah. paychecks as well. Like, which keep going. I didn't even think about either. Like, I, I didn't even realize that because even when I, my mom told me, my mom, my mom looks up like your signing bonus. So I'm like, oh, it was like, a, 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 it was like in the hundred. And I was like, that's, that's sick. But like, you, I didn't even realize like, yeah. oh, wow. Like if I got in the third or fourth round, you hear some of these signing bonuses. I'm like, oh my gosh. It was a million. Um, it was half of yeah. like, yeah, oh, Okay, yeah. cool, cool, cool. Would have been yeah, nice. And it, and it's uh, the whole process of going through the draft. Because I went to the Senior Bowl, went to the Combine, had your pro day, um, 
and in the senior bowl i was with uh the jaguars at that time and it was like jed fish jed fish who's awesome um i forgot that coach at that time he's a dc somewhere now but um and it was me Derek carr and jimmy garoppolo and those guys ended up going in the second round but you kind of don't nobody really knows because then you're also you're visiting with all these teams during the senior bowl and and then the senior bowl is similar to the combine in terms of like you're, now you're meeting with all those teams again um there's formal visits and you still you think you have an idea but you really like now going through it you have no idea like the team that says they're interested then they end up drafting like i thought the vikings were interested then they they take teddy which in, in the first round um so you just never know but yeah it's, a, it's an interesting experience uh, yeah not not too many people on planet earth are going to go through anything like that so um you know hope you got some good stories from that one uh to tell your kids one day i think that's yeah some kids and your family yeah maybe over a couple beers too we can get in some of the weird questions and shit they <laughs> ask you but i guess you know what, what comes with that though is you then go to the nfl everyone sees your name right the nfl draft even the last day gets millions of people to watch it i'm one of them i love the nfl draft um and it's just so interesting and i'm, I'm assuming like moving forward at that point right what like what are your expectations now, right? So you, you were second or third round pick, which means you're probably going to get a shot at starting. You're probably going to get, you know, first look, benefit of the doubt. Now you're a sixth round pick. Not to be, you know, uh, you know uh, yeah. unfortunate about it. You, you could easily be cut after, you know, training oh, yeah. camp. Like, dude, this guy doesn't have it. We can leave and, you know, cool, he got us $100,000. See you later. Like, how, how does that, like, just 48-hour period change your expectations and what you think is going to happen in your NFL career? I really didn't even think about it. Like I was, just, I'm like, oh, Chicago, this will be this is sick. And, and I remember, I liked uh, Matt Cavanaugh. He flew out the week before the draft, and I think that's kind of how I got on their board because I hadn't met with them during the Senior Bowl or the Combine. And then he flew out. Who Matt Cavanaugh? One of my, he's he's in my top ten for sure. Like he, he was a backup to Joe Montana, played in the league for like, like 15 years, and then and then was a coach for another. 15 or 16 years maybe even longer now um but just like an awesome guy came work me out we hung out i'm like super cool and then um and i've been drafted by him and, and learned about mark trustman who's who's kind of a, a quarterback guru and a more of an offensive minded coach so i was thinking like if this guy's drafting me there's a reason you know um so i, I might have a, i got a chance like it's not like a defensive coach or somebody that, that drafted me um but I'd known going into that camp that I wasn't going to be competing for the two because it was Cutler was there. It was um, going into the camp was uh, Jordan Palmer, Jimmy Clausen, and me. And going into camp, they had said it was going to be Jimmy and Jordan competing for the two, and I would get all the threes. So um, it just kind of I had no idea how it worked in terms of fifty-three practice squad. Like, how do they go about navigating that? Um, and I made the team the first week and then like everybody got hurt. There was like two linemen that got hurt. Brandon Marshall got hurt. So um, they ended up cutting me right before the, week, the end of week two. And then I was on practice squad majority of that year. They signed me back to the 53 like the last couple of weeks. But yeah, I, I wasn't really sure what to expect. I was just kind of like going with the flow. Not, just not really sure. Like, yeah. Hey yeah. man, you're there. You're on the sidelines. You're 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 suited up. Like I think mean, that's incredible on its own, man. I think that is again not not enough respect goes around to people like you. Where yeah, we all know Peyton Manning and Tom Brady. But they're literally the exception to the exception to the exception. You're already the exception though, because you made it to the NFL. You're on a 53 man roster. That's absolutely insane. You know, you're one of the best quarterbacks on planet Earth at the time. I don't care what anyone really says. Like it's just so cool that you have that opportunity. Um, and so you're in the league for seven years. You, you said it before, like you kind of latched latched on that's a weird way to say it you kind of hooked up with adam gase you really liked what he did and kind of quote unquote followed him around a little bit like what was it about the nfl that you what was it about adam gase that allowed you to say hey like i have my expectations he has his expectations for me this is this is probably the best way that i can stay in the league as long as possible is find a coach that knows what he's doing and, you know help him out every single place that he goes yeah, he, he, I mean, another guy who, who really hooked me up because going in, so Trustman gets fired my rookie year. John Fox gets hired, brings in Adam from Denver. They come from Denver, and a lot of guys from Denver come in. And then um, I was going to get cut going into preseason four. I remember Cutler and, and Dal Loggins was a coach who I also spent a lot of time with. He's in Arkansas now, but uh, another good top 10 coach. Um, I remember going into week four, I'd been sick and I missed 
training camp. I wasn't sick, but I had an injury. And uh, I didn't practice at all. Didn't do any um, any training camp at all. Like, but week three, I got healthy. Didn't play. Week four, week four I learned Dollar, like, hey, they're going to cut you. They ended up signing. Gase ended up bringing in um, one of his guys from Denver, and they were going to, like, make him the P-Squad guy because he had just got cut from somewhere else. And I was like, I remember just like, I, I again, I, I wasn't even thinking that my career could have ended there because it definitely could have been done at that point. But I was just like so grateful to have an opportunity where I'm like, I know this might be my last game and I'm going to get the whole game and I can do whatever I want. So like I was, and, and Cleveland had a bad preseason that year. So they were going to play their starters. Um, and I was like, I knew, I, I forgot who the, the coordinator was, but I knew all their stuff. And I was going to like signal whatever, like I was going to, I was bringing out the playbook. Usually in preseason, it's kind of limited, but I'm like, I got everything. I'm doing whatever I want. This is it. And I ended up throwing for like 200 something yards, a couple touchdowns, like just balling out for a preseason game. And um, I think that's where Gase started to, to like me. And they ended, up, they ended up keeping me on the 53 and they had to cut the other guy because I did too well. They're like, we can't let this guy go. Um and then he, so it was really like Gase that kind of attached to me because I, I don't have a choice whether they like me or not. Uh, and he, uh, that was a good year for me. I was on the 53 majority of that year. And then he ended up getting the head coach gig. And then I got cut from Chicago in 16 and he gave me another chance um, to compete. And then gave me, I, I was like the three because Matt Moore had been there for a while. Um, and Matt Moore and, and Ryan, those guys are awesome. But, um, the next year they ended up, Matt ended up leaving and it was me and Brock Osweiler. And so gave me another chance. And then they had a bunch of injuries in the jets and gave me another chance. But yeah, he just, I knew the offense at that point. I'd been like in it for three or four years. So I, I, it was easy for me to come in and mm -hmm. you didn't have to teach me anything. Um, and I could do, and I had shown that I, I had tape of me running his offense at a high level. So and you can help yeah. explain it to other quarterbacks, right? Like it's not yeah. – you, know, you, you understand your place in, in, the, in the hierarchy. Obviously, you're trying to play, but at the same time, you want the team to win, right? So you can explain what's going on in maybe terms that these quarterbacks or the coaches can't really get to click with the other quarterbacks. So that allows you to be an asset where, hey, like it never hurts having an extra quarterback in some way, shape, or form, especially someone that knows the offense and can and iterate that in many different ways. Yeah, I, I think like yeah, the situations that I, that I was in, like Tannehill was still learning the offense. He he, and I mean he's a vet. I, I wasn't going to help him much, but if you have a guy that's a good culture for the room, knows the offense, can contribute, um, then and then then they're going to bring you in. And the same thing for the Jets. Like Darnold was Sam was learning the offense. Um, they didn't have a lot of guys who had experience in the offense, and then I, with injuries, like I was the first guy they were going to call. I'd played, um, knew the offense, and then they ended up keeping me for that year and then the next year. I love it. Well, hey, man, seven years yeah. in the NFL, nothing to shy at. I think that's absolutely incredible. And here you are now on the For the Love of Sports podcast. So I'd have to say this is where your career is going to peak. Um, so I'm curious. I always like asking this to uh, athletes because the end of an athlete's career is pretty much unlike anybody else's. You, you play for a handful of years. You, you, I'm not going to say you got lucky. You worked your ass off. But seven years is a – that's a – pretty long nfl career when the average is what like one and a half two if you're you know decent so there's um, there's definitely lots that goes into it of for course sure. yes but yeah. i'd rather uh i'd rather attribute that to the hard work that you put in because you yeah. could have not put in any of that hard work and guaranteed you wouldn't have gotten those seven years so no, it works both ways but um yep. so like your your career comes to an end how does it come to an end is this you being like you know what i did it like i was in the nfl for seven years i had a lot of fun this was cool or was it Hey man, sorry. Like, we don't think you got it anymore. Yeah. Even to contribute <laughs> yeah. here, we're we're gonna have to say see you later, goodbye. Yeah, uh, um, yeah. There's not a lot of guys in the league at the highest level gonna go out on their own terms. Exactly. Like, you know them by name if they if they do for the most part. Like, not not many guys get to do that. Um, and I wasn't one of those guys. I gotta do that. I'd still I I would go now if somebody called. Um, but so. <clears throat> 2020 they had brought in joe flacco um I, and he was hurt he was just coming off like a neck surgery so they needed a guy to fill in, in until he was healthy essentially and they liked mike white as well and me and mike mike was on practice squad the year before with with us uh or with me and the jets and and then so the next year me and him were kind of like competing to see who was going to hold it off till joe came back and then they ended up rolling with mike i was on practice squad for two months and and they let me go, which at that point I was like, when you're like the third or fourth quarterback, it's like, 
I, I had my daughter, my son who weren't around. I was kind of like done. I, I, I just wanted to go somewhere where I was going to actually have a, a chance to, to play or compete or contribute. Like, um, so I was pretty frustrated at that point. And then I, I thought potentially I was going to get a call because during COVID, um, the practice squad rules had started to change before you were had a limited amount of years. Now it's that way now, but it started in COVID where you could, I could have been in the league for 10 years and they have a spot for me um, on practice squad. But so that didn't happen. Um, and then I had to talk with my agent. He's like, hey, there's not anything really going on. So I'd kind of like accepted that I was done. I didn't want to be the guy that was like chasing it for another year or a year and a half trying to do these other leagues. Um, I just wanted to do with yeah. my kids. USFL, yeah. XFL, AAF, like all those. Yes, that makes sense. Yeah, there's just, I don't know. I just was ready for this next chapter of my life. I I, I, I definitely was. I didn't realize what was going to come with it in terms of like like the anxiety that I, uh, being so attached. There's, there's just so much I wasn't aware of in, in, in like pivoting to this next phase of my life. Um, and then as I'm like kind of sorting through everything that's coming with that, the Vikings call last year's training camp and I um, I didn't have my second vaccine for 14 days so I couldn't go I didn't even realize that that was a thing I said I was like all right I'm packing my bag he's like hey we need a picture of your COVID card I'm like okay cool send it and uh, it was eight days not 14 days I'm like all right and I I was I hadn't got it yet but then my agent was saying uh, hey you're getting some some interest like are you ready are you healthy i'm like yeah, let's go and then um yeah then and so that that kind of set me back because i kind of like flipped the switch i'm like it's go time we're back mm-hmm. in it let's, let's go and then it's like oh just kidding like go back to to software sales which has been awesome but it's not football in the league yeah no it's it's not quite the nfl shout out zoom no. I mean, we all we all got very familiar <laughs> with zoom there for the last few years um appreciate everything that yeah. you guys do so thank you for allowing me to have great conversations with great people all the time. So thank you for that. Um, but no, man, I think, you know, it's so it's it, most, as you said, very few athletes get to say when their career is over, they're more likely yeah. told. I mean, even Peyton Manning, yeah, he retired after a Super Bowl, but dude, we all kind of knew like he was shot. Like <laughs> he probably wasn't going to play the next year. He shouldn't have played the next year. If his name wasn't Peyton Manning, he would not have been on a team. Right. So a very, very yeah. few actually get to call their own, um, call their own. And it doesn't happen too often, but, I think it's incredible. Your story is obviously, I mean, it's it's perseverance, it's dedication, it's it's you know retaining information, it's it's finding the right people to surround yourself with. You do so many different things to get to where you got to, which was playing seven years in the NFL uh, and doing so many great things along the way, meeting many people and, and growing this network. I'm kind of curious, what are like when you finally like as you said, you accepted it, then you kind of got that little tease, and then it went away, like. When it finally, what? When did you finally be like, okay, like, it's over? Like you kind of just said before, like if someone calls, you're you're still gonna run. But yeah, is that a, is I that kind of just something fun to say, or or is that, is that no, legitimate? no, just like because because people sometimes ask that, like, would would you play? It's like, are you, yeah, of course I would. Um, I've been playing my whole life. It's a the kids' game at the highest level to get paid to do it. It's pretty um, sweet. Yeah. So. I think after that, like after that season last year, I was like, okay, no, it's for sure done. Like you kind of, that, cause that was a tough season. Like I'm watching everybody, I'm seeing injuries. I'm like, oh, am I on, am I on their board? Cause I'm like, I'm obvious. I was obviously on, on like Chicago had reached out and the Vikings had reached out and uh, I was like, okay, like I'm on their board somewhere. So, so you kind of watch the season and, and you're not, I, I don't want anybody to hurt, but obviously it's inevitable that there are going to be injuries and stuff. So um, you're just kind of seeing where you're on, on that list. So after that, yeah, I, after last year, I was like, it's definitely done. Um, which I was kind of already there. Um, I was it's just, yeah, it's, it's, I'm super grateful. I think after you kind of, you become aware and get out of all the emotion and, definitely like the anxiety there's like some depression there's a lot of just stuff that's coming up that you haven't dealt with before I, i'm able to like truly reflect on what i've gotten to experience and like have conversations like this and it's like man i have no i was just telling my mom and my wife that i was gonna have this conversation i'm like you have, like who knows where you would have been without football i'm like that is so true like i i could have i might be in like nebraska or wyoming with my dad doing god knows what you know like i have football and sports in general have taught me so much and not only and, and have 
connected me with like some of the coolest people ever um, who have also taught me just how to be the man that I want to be today. Um, but yeah, just in terms of developing skill and so on so many levels, like football teaches you at all and sports in general, but like football, I think is, is one of those sports and especially playing the quarterback position. Um, you definitely have to develop some, some skill to, to get good at that. Uh, you, yeah, you have a lot of responsibilities as a quarterback. Uh, a lot of responsibilities, yeah. you know, helping, you know, understanding the coaches. There's so much stuff that goes into a just being a quarterback. But as you said, sports in general, playing them from a young age. Like, I, I want to get into it a little bit now. Like, what what are some of those lessons? Like, what are some of those things that you had no idea? You brought up anxiety a little bit, a little bit of depression. I mean, there's so many things. It's like, hey, you're doing this thing for every single day, essentially. You know, the, the time that you have off is vacation and then you go right back to it. So it's always there, right, if you're not doing it for that one or two days. And then yeah. it just kind of comes to an end and you're in your mid-30s, right? Most people retire when they're 65. Like, you're in your mid-30s and now it's like, ah, oh, shit, like, now what? Like, what? what is that? Like, I feel like that's just like running full speed and then just hitting a wall and just being like, yeah. well, where, where did this wall come from? Like, what am I supposed to do now? How do I get over it? How do I get around it? Do I dig underneath? Like, what? what is I, that? What are those, that, that short period of time afterwards? What's that like? Yeah, and I, it was like a wall that I couldn't see that I kept running into. It's like, you know, I'd, <laughs> I'd, get, I'd figure out it's a wall. I'm like, okay, let me run over here. There's another wall. Um, yeah, it, it was weird. I didn't realize how attached I was in terms uh, to being a quarterback. Mm-hmm. Like, not even just at the NFL, but just like how I, I was as a quarterback. And then all of a sudden... I personally don't identify as this guy anymore. And I'm like, what am I good at now? Who am I? Like, I'm not an NFL quarterback. Like, why do, why do you want to talk to me now? It's, it's like all this stuff isn't real. It's these stories and things that I'm telling myself. Um, but, and you're also, this, this is stuff you're dealing with for the first time too. So I, and, and the more you reach out and you start hearing other guys' stories, we're all going through the same thing, saying the same things to each other. But in the beginning, you feel like you're the only one. And then as soon as I started connecting with other guys, um, the NFL PA had a few events where I, I think it was for guys transitioning out of league. And like, for whatever reason, I hopped on it. And um, I remember a guy, uh, uh, his name was Nick Hardwick. He played for the Chargers for a long time, um, was was talking about all the stuff he'd went through. I'm like, this guy was in the league for 10 years and his, and is going through the same thing as, as me. Like, it's not a money thing. It's not like it, it's every athlete goes through this, I think, to some capacity. And he was he was saying things that I hadn't even verbalized to my wife or to anybody. I was like, I can't tell people this. Like, I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know, I'm not sure what's going on. And when he shared his story, I was like, okay, I'm cool. I, I, this isn't just a me thing. We're all, all these guys are going through it. And I kind of, I felt bad for some of my other friends who had trained, who had finished earlier. And, you know, I'm like, I wish I would have reached out to them a little bit to check in, but you just, when you're in it, you have no idea. Mm-hmm. You, you can't, there's no capacity for you to understand that that's even a thing. Cause so many guys would come back to me when I was in the league and say like, Hey, it's going to, the first thing they say is like, enjoy this time now. And you're like, yeah, of course I am. Like, but you just don't, there's I, at that, at least for me, I didn't have the awareness to kind of see that I knew it was going to end, but you just don't know how much you're going to miss it and all the things that are going to come with it and, until you're actually in it. Um, right. It's easy to, you know, do as I say, not as I do. Right. Like it's very easy to hear someone say that. It's like, yeah, of course I'm enjoying the hell out of this, but you don't like, yeah. you're not like, but you know, when it ends in two years, you know, what am I going to do? Like it's, as you said, you, you're fighting for your job essentially on a daily basis. Like this isn't something where you yeah. can kind of sit down and reflect and wonder and ponder. It's no, like I need to no. get better every single day. I need to watch film. I need to, you know, as you said, do your repetition that you've been doing for the last 15 years. You need to make sure you're doing all that stuff because if yeah. you slip up once, like let's be honest, man, you weren't towards the top of the roster. You know, if you slip up it once cut. or twice, you're a very easy cut. Like unfortunately, like the fourth, third quarterback, like no no offense, David, I'm never going to no. be one of you, but I'm sure there's another one of you out there somewhere. <laughs> right? like, so it's, it's just one of those things where you, you had to stay in it and you had to be, you know, work your absolute ass off to stay there. And then, yeah. yeah, as you said, it just kind of ends and, and you, you learn so much. And I guess, like, when you are hearing other athletes talk about it, like, it, it makes sense that other people are going through this, right? Like, all of you guys, as you said, you've identified you're David Fales, quarterback. Now you're yeah. David Fales. Who's like, that? Like, what, he's not yeah. a quarterback? So did he not play in the NFL? Well, I did play in the NFL, but does, does anybody care? Like, I want, I want like, a bowl yeah, game in college. Like, it's, it's like such a yeah. weird kind of, like – 
like out of body experience almost i'm sure where you're kind of taking that step back and be like who who am i what am i doing how am i like how, how like, even hearing other guys talk about it, how long did it take you to cope with that how long did it take you to kind of come to terms and be like i'm gonna be okay not only am i gonna be okay i'm actually gonna be pretty great and i can take everything i learned from football and just kind of use it because i'm gonna be alive for another 50 60 years hopefully like let's take advantage yeah. of this time yeah, probably like earlier this year in like February or March when I when I started to become aware of like where I actually was. Like I I probably heard Nick's story in like October, November, and that it was like okay, I'm good. You know, like uh, this isn't a me thing. I can share my story. I can actually like talk about it and, and move forward. But then, um, I would say probably earlier this year in March, yeah, or November, March, where I actually was like, oh man, like that sucked last year, but like, I was going to have to go through that eventually. Um, and maybe it's not as hard for uh, as other guys, like some guys maybe just have a different upbringing, different support system, whatever it is. Um, and they're able to bounce back a little bit faster, but it took, it took me a year. Like I was, as I look back and I kind of be reflect, I'm becoming more aware of like everything that I was going through. Um, and then you just, so I started reaching out to other guys, just having conversations. Um, and, and, and I already knew, even when I was in the league, like I'd look at the playbook and like look at some of the stuff I've done. I'm like, dude, if we can do this at a high level and I can communicate this to guys from so many different backgrounds, playing different positions, like I'm going to be able to do whatever I want. It's just getting figuring out what I want is, is going to be the harder part than being able to do it. Um, and so, I, yeah, that I've definitely applied that at zoom and sales. Um, I think like in football, I was trying, I was, I was trying to figure out where are all the guys going, where's, where's Brady going, where's Drew Brees going. So I spent some time with Tom house and, and 3d just to see what they're doing. Um, it's like the same thing. I'm kind of doing this next group. I'm like trying to find people who are where I want to be in different areas of my life. And then if it, if it's a fit, if it, if I'm vibing with them, I'm trying to like, provide value and, and stay connected with them to some capacity. But um, yeah, so I think that's like one of the ways that I'm implementing and just also getting clear and, and make sure I'm not doing the same thing I did in football and attaching myself to like what I do with software sales or, mm -hmm. or, or any other avenue of my life and just like trying to be way more present and, and for the, yeah, just, I would say present. Oh yeah, yeah. That awareness is very important, yeah. and understanding where you are and the people around you and what you're doing. You know, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So find five people that are going to push you forward, and not drag you back. Um, I think that's always important too. And man, it sounds like again an entire year of going through that. I could not imagine. I can't say I've ever had you know my feet in those shoes before, so I really can't say too much. But I know you, again, you've brought up anxiety here a little bit. Like where. How have you been able to, you know, as you said, you were able to cope with and figure it out. How have you been able to take what you've learned and use it to your advantage now moving forward? As you yeah. said, at, at Zoom, just in life, and talking to Peter, like, how do you take all these things that you learned from the NFL about yourself over the last 10 years, 15 years, and yeah. now be able to push forward and, as you said, even help other people too? I think, like, I, I one, one thing I realized earlier is, like, I am super routine and, like, I routine oriented and have been on a schedule my whole life. So I'm, I'm pretty conscious of that and try to stay on a, on a routine and a schedule and, and stay ahead of that. I think I just started doing the same thing. Like where, like I started dreaming kind of once I got over the anxiety and depression, which is tough. Like there's like meditation journaling. Like mm -hmm. there's a lot of people who, who have made pivots and transitions in their lives outside of football, but are very similar to the same thing I'm going through. Anybody who's had like an identity shift, it's all the same stuff. Um, so finding people who had kind of gone through that and have put together a morning routine with that's like meditation, becoming aware of like, how am I today? Cause a lot of the times I wasn't aware of how I was showing up in my house with my kids and my, and my wife. Like I thought I was okay, but then I'd go on there and they're like, what is going on with you? Like you are upset right now. And I'm like, huh, oh, I thought I was good. You know, you Sounds like, like one of them's upset right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think like meditation, like journaling, just some, some awareness exercises, but then also just talking to other people and like trying to attend different events, um, to just figure out what I wanted to do in this, in this next phase of my life, which it's been software sales, but, um, there's other things I want to get involved in and 
just trying to put those people around me and like seeing what sticks and like listening to myself, tr tr trusting my gut and my intuition. Like I kind of did in those certain pivot points. I, I look back at my career. I'm like, man, I just left the div division one scholarship. My mom was telling me not to, my dad was telling me not to like all these people are saying no. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm not staying here. You know, I left Wy Wyoming and I had another division one scholarship. Didn't even think about it. Like just left. Um, and, and definitely leaning on Peter and a lot of these conversations, like the questions are different now than they were during football. Um, but he went through the same exact thing. This guy was retired. Money wasn't a thing for uh, an issue for him anymore. And he was, he's like, I was saying the same exact things you're saying right now. And he had a plan of how he's gotten to where he's going now. And I'm able to ask like just some way deeper questions than how do you throw a football? And, um, he, there's people who have already gone through this stuff. So just making sure you're asking the right, right, right questions. Ask the right people, ask the right questions. You'll probably get a good answer. Um, but man, this has yeah. been, this has been awesome. I sincerely appreciate you coming on here, sharing your story, uh, you know, being open and honest with us. Some of the stuff that you had trouble with, some of the things that you've overcame, how much it was great, how much some of it sucked. Uh, so really appreciate it, David. This has been absolutely fantastic. I mean, it, we're pretty much at time. So again, just want to say thank you uh, for, for sharing your story. I know that's something that you wanted to do, and I'm grateful that you wanted to come on this platform here on For the Love of Sports to share that with my audience and, and hopefully many, many more people out there too. So I want to show you my gratuity, and I appreciate it, man. No, I appreciate you. I appreciate you uh, providing this platform to share my story. I, I'm like, that's something I realized too. I'm like, we have so many tools like this to, to be able to share everyone's story because it's going to re resonate with somebody um, the same way, like hearing Nick's story, just on a simple, it, I, I don't think it was a podcast. It was like a, a webinar, but it's like, if you can help somebody, it's going to hit someone. So it's, uh, yeah, I appreciate you providing this platform. Pleasure is all. This is my favorite thing I get to do, man. Uh, more of this I can do, the happier I'll be and appreciate it again. Yeah. hundred percent, man. If we can help one person, we can touch one soul. If we can get one person to understand that they're not the only person going through what you're going through, because again, or went through because every single athlete is going to deal with this at some point or another. Again, very few get to say, you know, I'm pretty good. I don't want to do this anymore. Most people are like, I would really love to do this, but I'm being told I can't, even though I don't think I can't, I'm being told I can't by too many people. So what am yeah. I anymore? And, you know, it's, 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 it's awesome that, you know, for lack of a better term that you got to go through that. So now you can help other people. I think that's really important. No doubt. Yeah. And then even the guys who get to make the decision that they're done, I think still go through it. They don't 100%. Make it. <laughs> yeah. 100% man. No, absolutely. So, uh, David fails, former NFL quarterback, of the Jets, Dolphins, Ravens, Bears, account executive over at Zooms bowl winner, New York. It wasn't a New York six bowl. Can I just say New York six bowl? What was it like December twenty uh, eighth? Um, you think it's probably close, right? It was. It was like twenty. It was like twenty sixth. I think it was right after. Yeah, there yeah. you go. That, those are the good bowls. So you're not, you know, you're not, you're not winning some like, I don't know the the you know, Gator Bowl is actually. It was a it was a, a bad boy lowers bowl. bowl. <laughs> yeah. Okay, no, those no. are awesome. Always great. Love yeah. it, dude. That's yeah. awesome. But but where can everyone find you? They want to hear more about your story. We only got to chat for about fifty minutes. Quickest fifty minutes of your life, I bet. But like, where can yeah. um, where can people learn more about you? Follow you and learn more about your story. Yeah, I'm, uh, Instagram. I'm definitely trying to be more active on Instagram. Um, I would say that's probably the best way to, to find me now. I'm on Twitter, but um, Instagram would be the best way. And, and my handle is fails10. Fails10. I love it, man. Good stuff. Well, thank you so much for your time. Time's the only thing we don't get more of, so I appreciate you giving me a little bit of yours. I appreciate the audience listening in on your story. And, hey, let's hope we can get one person a little help there. But awesome, man. Really appreciate it. Have a great rest of your day, man. You too. I appreciate it.